The crucifixion is a death penalty method that has been performed for the past few thousands of years. It probably dates back to the ancient Assyrians and Babylonians. We know that the Persians used it, and that the Macedonians with Alexander the Great implemented it too. But it's with the Carthaginians that the crucifixion became significantly widespread in Europe. Carthage, in fact, used to crucify many people, including its generals, who suffered huge defeats in battle. Ancient Rome is notoriously famous for having crucified Jesus of Nazareth. The ancient Romans learned the practice probably from the Carthaginians, or Phoenician traders. Crucifixions were generally performed not only to punish the criminals with a very slow and painful death, but also to show the criminals and their crimes written on the cross to the public and disincentivize other people from doing what the criminals on the crosses had done. How was it performed? Let's discover it together, step by step. Everything starts in the court with the sentence of a pretor, or judge, that charges the defendant with a crime worthy of crucifixion. Once the defendant is declared guilty, two men come to remove all the clothes and belongings from the convict in front of the judge. The convict is then tied to a tree or a column and flogged 20 times on average on his back with a very thin whip, often with bone or iron endings to make it more painful and to open wounds. Once the convict is flogged, the two men dress him up again and they force the convict to carry a 45 kg or 100 pounds crossbeam on his shoulders and tie with ropes his hands to it. The convict has to walk then to the place of his execution, generally outside of the city, with a piece of wood where his name and crime were written called Titulus, through crowds that look at him, insult him, throw things at him or even hurt him. Once the convict arrives at the execution place, there is a vertical wooden beam. The executors remove the clothes from the convict, then they nail both his hands and feet on the cross. Often the convict's hands were just tied with ropes to the crossbeam, often the executors hammered nails through the convict's palms or wrists, or both, because in a prolonged situation the hands alone could tear apart. The cross was then lifted up with ropes, and the convict was left to die with guards patrolling him. The convict was now waiting and wishing his death to come the soonest possible. Some sources mention that there was a small piece of wood called sedile on which the convict could sit or lean against. Other sources mention that this seat was a horn, and therefore the convict was sitting on a horn that was slowly perforating his genitals. The most difficult part for the convict is to breathe. Due to his hands being overstretched, he can't expand his thoracic cage easily and often needs to push with his nailed feet and pull with his nailed hands himself up. In most cases, the convict would die between 12 hours and could resist up to 3 days before dying from either cardiac rupture heart failure, asphyxia, sepsis because of the infections, dehydration or animal predation. In some cases, to make the convict suffer more, the executors could choose to make him drink water, to give him the posca which was the typical beverage in the Roman era made with water and vinegar, or to treat the wounds with the intent to make the convict last more and therefore suffer more, or wake up the convict and not let him rest to keep him awake in his pain. In the opposite case, if the executors want to end the suffering of the convict, they either choose to take an iron club and break the legs of the convict so that all the weight falls on his thoracic cage and he suffocates, or either pierce with a spear his thorax, heart or lungs. Crucifixions were very popular during the Roman civil wars. Many Jewish captives were crucified under the Romans, and Crassus, during the third civil war against Spartacus, ordered the crucifixion of 6,000 slaves stretched on 200 kilometers or 125 miles on the Appian Way, on average distance 30 meters from each other or 100 feet. Roman citizens could receive a death sentence, but not by crucifixion. Crucifixion was only reserved to slaves and non-Romans. Crucifixions were not always done the same way. In some cases the convict was nailed on a simple trunk or tree vertically without a cross. Seneca the Younger states that some convicts were also impaled with a stick up their groin area. Some sources state that Romans, only for Jewish crucifixions, crucified Jewish women nailed facing their crosses, so their breasts and private pasts were not visible to the crowds for modesty. The crucifixion was abolished only in 337 AD with the Emperor Constantine that converted to Christianity, but continued for many more centuries in Eastern countries. Did you enjoy this video? If yes, click on the right or on the left to see one more. Thank you very much for watching.